Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today, shall I will talk about imaginary numbers. The term imaginary numbers themselves has been the cause of some consternation, some anxiety for mathematicians because because there are so named people, uh, mathematicians, great mathematicians, have not taken them seriously, and it, it has been proposed that they should be named something else. Um, and uh, uh, Gauss, or the Prince of Mathematics, was involved in this, and he actually disliked this concept of imaginary, the terminology of imaginary, because people don't take them seriously. So there have other names been proposed, but imaginary numbers has stuck. So what is imaginary numbers? It all starts with uh, the following phenomenon. When we say x squared is equal to 1, then it says there's a number that you square and that gives you 1, and that's easy enough to solve, and then you say, well, we can take the square root of both sides like this. Okay, so let's do that with the right pen. You take square root of both sides like this, and then you get x is going to equal to plus or minus 1. In other words, uh, negative, uh, uh, in other words, uh, sorry, 1 squared will give you 1, and negative 1 squared will also give you 1. So for this original problem here, there were two solutions, okay? So x squared equals 1, the solutions were x is equal to 1, or x is equal to negative 1, okay? But what if the original problem was this, x squared equals negative 1? Now here we have a problem. Uh, now here, so what number multiplied by itself is negative one? Now, intuitively, we would say, well, there's no such number. There's no number when you multiply by itself will give you negative one. You can't take the square root of negative one, as we already know. But this is n this is more than a simple mathematical curiosity. This actually becomes a very important mathematical a hurdle it, it, that that was at one time. Uh, facing mathematicians in solving bigger problems. Uh, so, uh, how do you solve this problem? Uh, in fact, the uh, the prince of mathematics, Gauss, uh, elaborated a very famous theorem, a very famous theorem, and and that in fact is so famous it's called the fundamental fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, so um, for, uh, 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 Gauss, the, the prince of mathematics, whom we have met before, elaborated this. He said the fundamental theorem of algebra, and he said every uh, uh, every uh, polynomial uh, equation uh, such as this has um, uh, has solutions that are equal to the number of degrees uh, to the, to the degree of the. Uh, uh, of, of the equation. So if you have x squared equals negative 1, so this should have two solutions. Okay, so how can this problem have a solution? Okay, so here first we should understand imaginary numbers and then of, uh, uh, in the future we'll see how they're uh, important in uh, applications in numerous sciences. Okay, so what are imaginary numbers? Okay, imaginary number um, and uh, has have, uh, have been denoted as I, and the name stuck despite the fact that there were many objections to the terminology itself. So the basic imagined number is given the letter I, and that I is defined as the square root of negative 1. Okay, so I is the square root of negative 1, that's what you have to know. So you can't take the square root of negative 1, he said, right? But here it is, we're going to do it right now. So square root of negative 1 is defined as i. That's the fundamental imaginary number. So there's some basic principles that you should know in how to manipulate these imaginary numbers. Okay? So, and then i square is defined as negative 1. Okay? And then i cubed is going to be i squared times, like i squared times i, right? You follow? which is this times this is going to be negative i. Okay? And finally, um, uh, and finally, i to the fourth is going to be i squared times i squared, which is plus 1. So this you have to know, okay? 
you just write this down, I don't know, five times, ten times, however many times it takes, just write it down until you get these these four basic facts. And then you have to memorize them. They're not necessarily intuitive. For example, okay, I squared is negative one. So I, I squared is I times I, right? So you say it's the square root of negative one, the square root of negative one, which is I, times square root of negative one. And you say, well, if I know how to do this. And you say square root, and you combine the two squares, negative one times negative one. And then you would say, okay, that's square root of one, this, that's one, right? So you would say I square is one, but that's not what it is. I square is negative one. So some of these basic principles don't apply over here. These are basic definitions of ima how imaginary numbers function, okay? So one critical thing to appreciate is that I square is not one, I square is negative one. Just like if you had, uh, uh, um, uh, if you take uh, x and then uh, like square root of x and squared, all it does, does is just gets rid of the square root sign and the x remains. So i squared gets rid of the square root sign and the negative one remains. So that's really important to understand. So uh, i is the square root of negative one, i squared is uh, negative one, i cubed is opposite of i, it's this times this, okay? So i cubed is negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is negative i. Okay? And i to the fourth is your best friend, which is negative 1. So i to the fourth is negative, uh, I, I'm sorry, i to the fourth is positive 1, and that's like, okay, it's really nice to know i to the fourth. So these are four uh, uh, i values that you have to know. And after this repeats, see, because i to the fifth is going to be i to the fourth times i. Well, i to the fourth is just one, so i to the fifth is i, right? And i to the sixth is going to be i to the fourth times i squared. Well, i to the fourth is just one, and i squared is negative one, and that's negative one, okay? So these are the four values of i, the imagined number i, that you must know, okay? Now, <clears throat> So this is this is called imaginary number, okay? From imaginary number, we have uh, something called uh, 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 complex number, okay? A complex number is is a basically a mar marriage of real numbers and imaginary numbers, okay? Complex number is written as a plus b i, okay? Complex number has a real component from the real numbers and a imaginary component here and it's uh, imaginary. So a complex number is a marriage, so to speak, a combination of imaginary numbers and real numbers. In fact, real numbers are named in real numbers because of imaginary numbers as a comparison to the imaginary numbers. Now you know why they're called real numbers, right? They're called real numbers because of the existence of the imaginary numbers. So when uh, real numbers and imaginary numbers are combined, the numbers that the result is a complex number, okay? So for example, here is a complex number. This is a complex number and the real component of this is three. That's a real number, and the imaginary component of this is 2i. Okay? Now, you can't add this. It's not like 5i or something like that. Okay? These are, these are like unlike terms. You can't add the real and the imaginary. Okay? So the real component of the complex number and imaginary component is, cannot be uh, added. So this is called complex number. Now, this completes our understanding of numbers up to this point. So we started off by saying these are natural numbers, one, two, three, dot, 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 right? And then we had the whole number, zero, one, two, three, and ellipses like this, right? And after this, we had the integers, okay? And uh, right, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, th this. And then outside the integers, we had the rational numbers, oh, and these are all numbers that could be written as a fraction. And rational numbers. And then outside the rational numbers, we had the irrational numbers. Okay. Okay. And then combine these two, we had the real numbers. Okay. 
So these are the real numbers. Now outside of real numbers are the imaginary numbers. Okay, and that's bi. Those are the i numbers. And when you combine the imaginary and the real numbers, we get complex numbers. Okay, so this is our current understanding of how what numbers are. And uh, uh, this sto the story that you see before you, it seems like very uh, uh, simple to you perhaps, but in the, hist in the history of humanity, going from natural numbers to whole numbers, an addition of the zero as a, con a mathematical concept was actually uh, quite a step ahead. So, um, so this, however, completes our understanding of numbers. There's some uh, basic uh, rules of uh, 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 arithmetic rules for complex numbers that we should uh, now uh, understand. So, we have three plus two i. This was one complex number, right? So, I just wanted to suggest to you again that this is a plus b i. This is the imaginary part, and that's the real part. And what happens if you add this to two plus seven i? This is a second complex number. How do you do this? Well, I, as I suggested. The real number, real number, they're like like terms, and the two imaginary numbers are like like terms. So you add the reals, you get 5, and then you add the imaginary here, you get 9i. So that's how you add two complex numbers. You add the component, you add the uh, real component, and then you add the imaginary component. And let's do some uh, other sub uh, uh, problems. So here's 3 minus 2i minus 4 minus uh, 3i, okay? Now, just uh, all other arithmetic is the same. So I can like distribute the negative over here, right? So this becomes like that. And I just add them. So 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And add the uh, imaginary numbers, I get plus 1i, okay? So addition and subtraction is uh, just the same, except you add the real part together and you add the imaginary part together. Now multiplication gets even more interesting, okay? Now for example, if I have i times 3 plus 2i, okay? Now here I'm multiplying a imaginary number, okay? Now when it's all by itself like this, it's sometimes known as pure imaginary number. Pure imaginary number. And this is a complex uh, number over here. So uh, nevertheless, um, has, it's i times the quantity 3 plus 2i, OK? Um, and um, when you multiply this out, you use the distributive property, you get 3i, OK, plus i times uh, 2i. That becomes 2i squared. But then we're not finished here, because i squared, as we know, OK, i is squared of negative 1. i squared is what well, is negative i, OK? And i cubed is, uh, um, uh, excuse me for a second. Um, uh, sorry, i squared is negative 1. What am I doing here? Sorry. i squared is, I was a little distracted. i squared is negative 1. i cubed is negative i and i to the fourth is 1. So i squared is negative 1, so we can simplify this. So this becomes 3i plus 2 times negative 1, and this is 3i minus 2. Now this is interesting because it's kind of like uh, the real became the imaginary, the imaginary became the real kind of way, right? So, and it is Mustafa, it is mathematically proper to write this as negative 2 plus 3i because this is uh, 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 by, uh, by agreement a plus bi is this is how it is written. Uh, typically, the real, real number is written first and the imaginary component is written second. Um, okay. Um, so this is multiplication. Now let's do let's do a couple more examples. Let's do this. So minus two i uh, times four minus i. Okay. Now again we do the distributive property. You get negative eight i. Negative two times negative i is plus two i squared. Okay. Now now we understand that i squared is negative one. I'm just writing this so you get used to this.
okay so i square is negative one so this is negative eight i right so negative one so two times negative one so this becomes negative two minus eight i like this okay so um let's do um some more example of this how about this one we have 9 minus 2i times the quantity negative 4 plus 7i. Now here, we have two binomials, so to speak, right? So we have to do FOIL. So we, that's what we'll do. We're going to do FOIL. So first is going to be negative 36. That's this. And then there's outer. And that's uh, 63. I and then we have inner which is plus 8i and then the last is negative 14i square correct so the last is negative 14i square okay so you have to be careful when you do these eh? as you realize this is negative 36 okay so this is 6 uh, 63 plus 8 is 71 i and negative i squared, i squared is negative 1, plus 14, correct? Now, and then we can uh, combine the like terms over here. So you get negative 22 plus 71i, okay? So that's how you simplify um, uh, this, uh, that's how you multiply 2, um, a complex number. Okay. Um, the last thing is uh, dividing to two complex numbers. Okay. So there are three other topics that I like to discuss today before we finish with the complex numbers. Okay. First is dividing complex numbers and graphing complex numbers. Okay. So uh, we just did multiplication of complex numbers. So we have, here's an example: seven plus five i and divided by 1 minus 4i, okay. Now, the way we do this is slightly different than what you might expect, okay. But this phenomenon is same, similar to 1 plus, let me, this problem is similar to this problem, 7 plus 5 times uh, uh, square root of 2 over uh, 1 minus 4 times square root of 2 because i is, is in a square root thing right so it, this problem is very similar to this now if we, when we did this in algebra one we suggested that, that it's not mathematical mathematical managed to have uh, uh square roots in the denominator so the way we got rid of this square root was by multiplying by the conjugate conjugate i think that's how you spell that so multiplying with the conjugate, the conjugate of this was 1 plus 4 squared of 2. Okay, the only difference between conjugates between this, okay, this was a plus b times a minus b. So this became a squared minus b squared, and that's how we got rid of this square root. So why do I mention this problem again is this, the, the complex number problem is similar to this problem. The way we got rid of this, okay, was to multiply by its conjugate okay and then you would foil that and you that's how you would uh, get, rid of, uh, get rid of the square root this problem is the same thing the way you do this problem is by multiplying by the com uh, complex conjugate which is this so this is a conjugate for for real numbers okay this is a conjugate for complex numbers and in fact that's what it's called it's called com complex conjugate now these terms uh, I would request you to uh, commit to memory and you know it's just kind of nice to use proper terminology when you talk about some of these things instead of saying you know you do you multiply by the thing or you multiply by you know the, you know the, you know that's that kind of stuff it's just just kind of it's not just two words to remember complex conjugate it's not that complex right so it's complex conjugate so you multiply by the complex conjugate okay so, so this is the complex conjugate. Of course, you multiply both the numerator and denominator because that way you keep the value of the fraction the same. 
So when you do that, okay, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to write, write it down over here. I'm just going to write the top as it is. I'm going to do one at a time. And the denominator I'm just going to do over here, see? This is a plus b times uh, 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 a minus b, right? So it's going to be a squared minus b squared, basically, right? So it's going to be 1 squared minus 4i squared, right? I hope I didn't do that. So a plus b, this is a minus b. If you FOIL this, you can get a squared minus b squared, okay? Now this is like a minus b times a plus b, or you might get confused with that, but it's the same thing. It's the commutative property of multiplication. You can rewrite this like that, a plus b, a minus b, if you like. It can be a squared minus b squared, okay? So uh, if you do that, let's do it. Let's see. What, and then in the next step, I'm going to multiply the top. I'm going to FOIL it. So first, outer, inner, and then last. You have to be very careful. You have to use progressive logical reasoning. You have to use baby steps so you don't make any mistakes, okay? So first, outer, inner, last. And then this is just uh, 1 minus 16i squared, okay? So now I'm going to simplify here. So this, these are like terms, okay? I squared is negative one, right? So this is negative twenty. So this becomes negative thirteen. That's seven minus twenty. I squared is negative one, negative thirteen, and this becomes thirty-three i over. 1 minus i squared is negative 1, so this becomes 16, positive 16. So this is negative 13 plus 33i over 17. Okay? And if you wanted to write this, you would say negative 13 over 17 plus 33 over 17i. So you would write this as a complex fraction like this. Okay? So that's how you divide, this is how you divide complex numbers, okay? So what have you learned so far? So far I have defined for you what a complex number, a complex number is, and it all starts with the complex number i, so imaginary, imaginary number i, which is square root of negative 1. And from here we said you have to know i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1. And I suggested to you that these are the basic definitions that you must still be able to do any of these. And I suggested to you that this is a complex number, which is composed of a real number and imaginary number, uh, imaginary component over here like this. Okay, and then we talked about adding and subtracting complex numbers, and we talked about multiplying complex numbers like 3 plus 2i times 2 minus 4i, and then you use FOIL to do that, and we talked about dividing complex numbers such as 7 plus 5i over um, 1 minus 4i. And then I suggested the way you do that is by multiplying that the numerator and denominator by the complex conjugate. Okay. The last thing I'd like to uh, talk to you about is um, uh, the imaginary plane. And then uh, next time I'll elaborate on the imaginary plane. So here is what you're familiar with is a Cartesian plane, but this is not a Cartesian plane. This is an imaginary plane, and this is how you describe, how you, how you plot imaginary numbers. The x-axis remains the same, and this is where you, the real component of the imaginary number goes, the real component of the complex number goes, and in what you're familiar with, the y-axis, that's where the imaginary component of the uh, uh, of the complex numbers. So this is a complex plane, okay? It's not a Cartesian plane, but it's a complex plane. It's a plane where you graph imaginary numbers. Now, imaginary numbers such as 3 plus uh, uh, 4i, okay? Um, so let, let me give you 3 plus 2i. Now, they are not uh, uh, 
even though they like they have two parts over here okay they this represents one point in this graph okay so you would go one two three on the real axis and then you go up one up two over here and this point right here right here that point okay represents uh, this imaginary number so ima on, in the imaginary plane every point is not represented by an ordered pair a point is not represented by an ordered pair a point is represented by a complex number like this so every point in the imaginary plane is represented by a complex number now this over here for example right there that's a complex number too okay that this point right here okay that's going to be 3 plus 0 i okay because it's on the x uh, the real axis okay this point right here that's 5 that is 0 plus 5i right there okay so the critical difference between a complex plane and Cartesian plane is that every point in a complex plane is not represented by a, uh, a ordered pair rather it is represented by a complex one complex number so this one is negative 3 minus 3i okay so that's uh, what you have to know and the origin for the complex pain right here is 0 plus 0i. Zero it's not, the, so the, it's, there's no ordered pairs here. It's just one number, the one complex number representing every, um, uh, every little, um, every point in the Cartesian plane. Okay. Um, and um, inshallah, next time I shall elaborate on the complex plane and some practical applications of imaginary numbers. Until then, as-salatu wa-salamu wa-rasulullah wa-rahmanullah 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 wa-rahm